Then this one was still running, running. To Come to you. us, yeah, to us, us. So then I tell the guide, take the guests to the car. So it was maybe from here up to there, there it was maybe 40 or 50 meters. Yeah. So the runners come closer. Now me, I cannot reach the car because the runner was very close. And those people, they are already in a vehicle. So then it was me and Rhino. It was maybe like this is phobia. Yeah. So when I go this side, the runners follow me. When I go this side, the runners follow me. So they lay later and they said, I just uh, jump in the euphobia, milky bush. I close my eyes and also my mouth and jump in. So this one I just walk around, walk around, walk around. From there, then I just uh, make a dog like a uh, sound like a dog. Whoa, whoa, and he yeah. run away. So Denzel, today we had the privilege of having you tracking with us. Um, so I think, um, you know, apart from seeing your skills today, uh, we just want to talk a little bit about who you are, where you're coming from, and how you got involved with, uh, you know, conserving the rhino and specifically with Save the Rhino Trust. So uh, what is your story? How long have you been doing this work? Okay, as so well, um, um, doing this job uh, since 2006. Yes. So <clears throat> I start with camels. Yes. So that time we were using the camel as a vehicle. Yeah. Because that time there was no, uh, uh, I mean some areas yeah. that a car cannot reach. So yes. we used the, the vehicle or the camels to reach that place. Okay. So, and sometimes, but not only the the camels, there was also a donkey. Yeah. So the camels only the one who loads our equipment and they we, we were using for the donkey for transport. Yes. So so that we can reach where we want to reach. Yeah. So it's for me it was very good because you cannot walk for twenty two days with yes. your feet every day for yeah. the donkey as well was a, a good transport for us. Yeah. Yeah. So basically that was like your local 4x4? Four four. Yes, yeah. And then taking you places where cars cannot go to yeah. look after the rhino. Yeah. So, wow, that's 14 years of tracking. Yeah. yeah that's pretty spectacular. But um, how did you get involved? Was it your family that was involved that started with the program? Um, so the program, so was not in family was involved. Yeah. So, but for me, um, when I failed the school, it was 2005. Yeah. So then I was around the area where we call Bagoncha. Yeah. And it, for me, it was, uh, uh, let me say, I, want, I wanted to be a part of uh, Cause Everything the Rhino. Yeah. And I was thinking for me, if I enjoy the, the trust, yes. it would be very good because even my grandmother or my daughter, yeah. so you never see the rhino. Yeah. If I could be maybe the one who protect the rhino, so maybe uh, one day my kid will come and tell her, ah, there's the rhino there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that is, that's quite spectacular. Um, an interesting thing today was when we were sitting observing the rhino, um, I could see that uh, one of the trackers, he was noting some stuff in a book. Yeah. So what is that information that you're collecting? So, uh, so that does we call uh, 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 data collection. Yeah. So that is in every day when we're going out. Yes. That is our main uh, task. Yeah. So when we're going out in the field, so when we see the rhino, so we take that small book, so we call uh, ID book. Yes. So it means rhino identification book. Yes. So each and every necessary information that we see on the rhino, we have to fill in in that book. So after we done the patrol, we bring it to the base camp. Yes. So they must put all all, all information in the computer. So then they keep also the the 
the information that we see uh, from the from the bush. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, so in the book you cover aspects like identification which rhino it is, yeah. the area you see, body yeah. condition, yeah. new marks on the rhino. G those GPS coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so basically you work out the home range, you know, after a period of data collection, you can see exactly where the rhinos are moving mm -hmm. and then have a better idea of home range and then obviously how to monitor these rhinos yeah. better. You know, yeah, to, especially you know, for the for the GBS. Yeah. So the GBS exactly, you can work out the home range. Yeah. Even you can know, uh, maybe today I find rhino from behind that mountain. Yeah. If maybe that rhino has been killed or maybe something happened, so then you easily go to the ID book or to the form. Yeah. Then you check the, the the coordinates, and then we go head to that place. Yeah, yeah, it's helped a lot. Hans, thank you. Let us today some of your spoor can see. Om te zien of hier een oster nog veilig is daar niet bos. Zo, jij is van Save the Rhino Trust. Zo, hoe lang werk je nou voor Save the Rhino Trust? 2003 tot 2020. Wow, dat is lang tijd. So Hans, he has been work, working for Save the Rhino Trust from 2003 up until present. So that's a lot of years of experience. Um, so you help the Rhino Rangers from the Huap Conservancy, the officers from Nampol. So you play some of them here in the Huap Conservancy for the yeah. Oomblik. Als hij iemand hier zo genoeg is, hij komt uit help. Ja. Hij is weer bij Palomba Concessie. Ja. In tracking. Oké. So the role of Hans is he works for Save the Rhino Trust. So they go on a rotational patrol basis. So if he's needed in the Huap Conservancy in the Palomba Concession, that's where he's going to be based. And then where they are based is normally right in the core area of where the rhinos are moving and that's how they will then monitor because of his uh, experience he will also then teach and then also lead like Hans. Hans is the senior rhino ranger here in the Huap Conservancy so they will be the two guys with the most experience and then leading the team in successful patrols. How many days are you here in the bus with the span here? 22 days. 22 days and then you will then move to dan zal je naar een andere area toe gaan. Yes, gaan als tien dagen daar gaan we weer een ander area in gaan of hier zo weer terugkomen. So yeah. So he will spend 22 days here with the team here in the Huap Conservancy. Take a small break and then he will go. I come either back if he's needed in this conservancy, or he will then move to a new area for rhino patrolling and monitoring. Hoe moet je gaan beginnen met Save the Rhino Trust? Kamil Team gaat beginnen. Aangesteld en Kamil Team gaat. Kamil patrouille gaat doen met Kamil Team. Ben Bakonja. Bakonja en Dungis en Kamil. Oké. Maar hoe moet je gaan beginnen? Was het familie wat een Save the Rhino was of je net gevoel je wil ook er een oster op pas? Ah, mijn mijn pas wat game gaat. Ja. Doe volle altijd omdat niet aangesteld in mijn pas. Ja. Doe kreeg je smaak van die werk. Oké, voor voor een oster. Voor een oster en ja, ja. Zo ga maak ik. Ik praat met mijn vrouw, mijn vrouw blijft. Ja, ja. Dus ja, ik zal je ook kans. Vlek ik, toen ze aanstel, toen los ik bij Bagonja, toen begin ik daar zo met Camille die patrouille rennen je over. Ja, ja. So. How he started was uh, his father was a game guard, um, so he was always joining him out in the bush. Uh, then his father got interested in rhino conservation, but he could never join. But then him, the next generation, then uh, he applied, you know, he directly asked the founder of Save the Rhino Trust, that's Bly Flotit, and uh, he started in a very isolated station called Pakonja and that's where they used to or still do the patrols with camels and then donkeys. So that is very rugged terrain, no cars can access those areas and that's how they patrol in those areas. 
and that's how he started. So, uh, what, what is nog lekker voor jou elke dag om in die bos te wees? Om je rhinosters te zien? Mm. Om die rhinosters en ook die dieren te zien. Ja. Yeah. Je hebt geen geboen ook die level van die veld. In die bos wees. Mm. Ja, so as jy in die dorp is, jy voel jy so mooi nie. Ja, jy voel jy so. Kan jy gaan, jy bent ook wel net twee dagen slaap of morgen terug gaan. Ja. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, what excites him, obviously, this is why he does it, is seeing the rhinos, spending time with the rhinos, seeing the wildlife out there. Uh, but mostly also being out in the bush. If he goes to town, likes to spend one or two days, but then he wants to be back out in the bush. So Hans, thank you very belangrijk work. Mm. Yeah, bye, thank you. Yeah. So, Josias, yeah. you're the youngest member of the Rhino Ranger team. So tell us a little bit more, how did you learn to track um, Rhino? Actually, uh, I learned from uh, Rhino Specialist, which is a white. That's he, Hans, we, yeah, yes. He taught me how to, how to identify the footprints of the rhinos, and then, and then the signs that you have to look of or the signs that you have to consider yeah the freshness of the footprints yes those are the things that he taught me and then from there he trained me how to identify the dangs of the rhinos and from those signs we have to track rhinos yeah yeah so uh, that's very special learning from somebody like him so many years out in the bush, uh, all that experience. So, uh, do you consider it like a privilege to learn from him? Something special to learn these skills? It is really a privilege for me to learn from him. Uh, from this, I, I have gained experience. Yes. And then, hoping that soon I will be I will be a specialist. Yes. In rhino tracking. Um, obviously, that's going to come very fast. Uh, I mean, you're doing it every day uh, when you're out here. You're, every day you're out trekking. So uh, it's hard work, but uh, hopefully you find it exciting. And then uh, hopefully many more years of uh, rhino conservation in your veins. Yeah.